Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So, today in Playwright, we are going to talk about whenever you are trying to automate something, whenever we have to, let's say after login, we have to automate home page, search page, or add to cart, product page, something like this. Let's say if you see this e-commerce application and uh, I just simply directly want to go to my cart page or payment page or something. So again and again, in every test case that we have to log in, right? That is a major problem because unnecessary username, password, click on sign in button, then go to the home page. And then you are specifically going to the cart page. So likewise, if you have 10 different scenarios or 10 different use cases and every day you are running five times, 10 times. So you are going to log in multiple times unnecessary every time and you know that email is absolute i mean login is absolutely working fine then why to log in and why to waste our time in login to check those scenarios which are going to be tested after login so in that case playwright says that why don't you create login only one time and you don't need to log in again and again so playwright will keep those uh, uh, session storage in some json file and then you can use that storage authentication json file later on for the future purpose let's see in fact tomorrow after 15 days also or after one month also if you really want to execute some test cases you just need to give the storage path it will just come over here and then no need to log in right to play right when you launch the application it will be by default login into your application and then you can execute your program so in this way you can just avoid the re-login unnecessary through the script again and again right so let's see how to do this so for example let's say i'm going to use this application and then we have to enter the email id password for example this i have already created a username password here and uh, i'm just going to write a simple script i'm going to launch this application automationpractice.com and then from automationpractice.com when i navigate then i want to click on this sign in so that we can reach to this particular page so this is the sign in link is there so i can quickly create a locator that is page dot this time we have to use a click and then what exactly you want so this is a colon i can use the text property which is this is the sign in link that i want to click on it perfect so page dot click sign in that i'm going to use it after that i'm going to use the username password so page dot fill that we have to use and uh, what is the selector that you want to use that so if you really see the, so here you can see this is the id equal to email can you see that id equal to email i can use this okay so this is the css selector i can use this quickly so hash id and what is the value so value i'm going to use this one i've already created this uh, username password you can also use this particular username password or you can create your own username password same thing let's say i'm going to use this is my page dot uh, fill okay so this is a valid username password and then i want to click on dot click once again to the button so button is what sign in so I'm going to click on it. So this is only one time thing that you have to use it. Here you can see ID equal to submit login. So first you are writing your uh, email stuff, like you're writing your login steps over here, enter the username, password, and that's it. After that, what I want, after that I want to maintain this particular uh, session in a specific storage. Okay, so what we have to do, you have to use the concept of browser context once again. So through this browser context, there is one method that is called a storage state method is there see this is one so i'm going to use the second one i'm going to use the storage stage options because i have to store some uh, storage in some json file that i have to maintain so here you have to use new browser context so see new context that i'm going to use it and then dot you have to use the storage options method is available dot set path and then you have to tell where exactly you want to maintain these sessions so I'll say simple, okay, fine. I'm going to maintain under paths dot. There is what get uh, get method. And then you have to pass that where exactly in which file that you want to store the, the session. So I simply say, okay, fine. Let's see, this is my, okay, app login dot JSON file that I have created. What will happen when you run this code? This is only one time activity that you have to execute this particular code. Let me write in the next line so that you will see it properly. And then that's it. So when I run this code, it will generate one app login.json file in which all the entire login information, session information will be maintained. And then I can use this particular app login.json in my upcoming script or in my next script or whenever I want to log in, I just need to log, use this particular JSON file. 
So it will not do the login. It will automatically log in while launching the application itself, while launching the URL itself. We don't need to log in again and again. So for example, let's say I'm going to run it. Simple run as Java application. And let's see this JSON file will be created or not. That's only one time. At least one time you have to execute it so that this JSON file will be created. Here you can see that it's going to, and then entering the username, password, clicking on sign in. So looks good. Everything is fine. And let's see it. refresh. So this refresh your project, this application app login.json file will be created at the root of the project. You can give any path. So let's say I'm going to refresh it. And here you can see app login.json file got created here. See this when I open this JSON file, it looks like this. So this is maintain your domain and value and name and everything like this HTTP secure uh, only and secure false. Uh, some token or some sto uh, session cookies they are maintaining like that in the form of cookies section over here. We are not bothered about the content here. So you just need to let it be like this. Now I'll do one thing. I'm going to launch this application once again. So this is done one time activity new auth.json file. I have created a new file and then from this new file, what exactly I'm going to do that I'm going to launch the application once again, the same application I'm going to launch it. And this time when I launch the application, this time it should not ask me to enter the username password. It should display the home page directly with my username password, right? So how to do that? So we have to explicitly tell to this particular browser that uh, <clears throat> we have to create a new context once again. So see this new context and then we have to use the new context options here. So how to use that? So in this case, you have to write new browser dot. Um, see this, this option we have to use next uh, context options method you have to use a dot set storage set path. See this, this set the storage set path that you have to use it. And then you have to tell that uh, where exactly that your JSON file, the storage JSON file is available. So you need to just write path. This time you have to use a dot get and then what is the file name? The file name that we have created, exactly same file name that you have to give app login.json and the semicolon, right? So this is a script that I have written. So when you start the browser context, that time you have to explicitly tell that please take the login session from here. So app login.json that I have created. After that, this will give you new context, will give you the browser context. I'm going to store inside the browser context um, is equal to this and then you import your browser context from playwright and then from this browser context we are going to launch the page so i'm going to use this is a new page and this new page will give you what new page will give you the page reference so that page page is equal to this and then from this page reference i'm going to navigate to the specific url and that's it okay so you see this uh, when you launch the url first time see it's saying sign in over here in my original browser this is not the automated browser. So when you launch this first time, obviously it will give you the login page or home page like that. And then you have to click on sign in. But when I launch it through play right now with this particular JSON app login dot JSON session, in that case, it should not ask you for the login. It should automatically logged in. That is the major thing. We will see that. So let's run it and let's see if it's really happening or not. So run as Java application. It should show me my username here. Awesome. Can you see that test trigger Naveen is already there and user is already logged in. This is so perfect. Right guys. Right. So now I'll show you once again. See, I'm going to sign in a sign out actually from here. Now the user is completely logged, uh, logged out. Let me just close the browser. Also, if you are okay, if you're having a doubt that, okay, no, the browser is actually already logged in in the background or somewhere. No, it's not like that session is not logged in. I'm going to run it again. Let's see tomorrow you're going to run the script once again. So it will use the same JSON file and then it will not ask you to re-login. And then you can continue your work from here. You can see test trigger Naveen is there. This is so awesome, right? And then you can just continue, click on cart and add to cart or payment page or whatever. You can continue over there. I hope it's clear and it will work. I tried this thing with multiple applications. It's absolutely working fine. You can maintain the session. You can just create whatever the login session or whatever you want to do that. And then after that, just store inside the some JSON file. You can give the path anywhere in your C drive or D drive or something or your project location. And then after that, you have to create the browser context once again with the new context options. And then after that, that's it. It's good to go. 
right so you can use this particular script let me know if you have any issues try this this is so amazing feature in selenium is actually missing here you can just uh, save a lot of time save a lot of script reusable things also you can use that with respect to auto session login so thank you so much that's all for this particular video guys i hope you liking it please subscribe to the channel share this playwright with others let me know if you have any concern any issues thank you so much i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all